Did you notice any singing of the angels in Cadence Scripture? No. They were talking, weren't they? They were talking, not singing. This past Wednesday, we had a funeral for Georgia May Langford, and that stirred up many questions about angels. Someone came to me and asked, are there any female angels mentioned in the Bible? Or are they all like male, like Michael and Gabriel? I thought it was a good question, and I was sure that we could get an answer from the Bible, but I wasn't real positive what to tell her about female angels. So I studied the question, I broke out my Brown Trail School notes, and started studying. It was a good refreshing course for me, and I hope it'll also be a good and informative course for you if you have questions concerning angels. You know, the subjects of angels is one that, uh, for one reason or another, we know very little or nothing about. You'd be surprised how many people actually know nothing about them, only what they've heard. It is a biblical subject, and our ignorance is not brought by lack of biblical teaching on it, but by lack of study of that particular subject. So if we would study it more, we would come to a full understanding uh, as much as possible as given to us by God. We'll try not to uh, exhaust everything that the Bible has to say on this subject. Um, we're going to spend enough time, though, to at least make you familiar with what the Bible teaches about angels. The very sound of the word angels thrills the man on the street, even those who do not know God. You start talking about angels, it has a tendency to thrill people. It's a very sentimental word, a word of endearment as we uh, use it in our vocabularies today. Perhaps no one biblical word is used and cherished more than that particular word of angels. Yet we probably know less about angels than we do about other biblical subjects that we find fewer references to in the Bible. There are many things that have less reference in the Bible than angels do. We need to increase our knowledge about angels, there's no doubt about it. But we'll begin this study by looking at some things that are taught, but uh, are not true. I want to make sure that we understand that not everything is true. There are several things that are taught that are not true, but not by preachers of the Church of Christ, as far as I know. One of the first things that's taught that's not true is that nothing can be known. Can anything be known about angels? Well, yes. The idea that nothing can be known about angels has become a syndrome that affects many people, particularly in the denominational world. Few preachers preach on the subject, and they are so significant uh, no really significant books on the subject, and those that are, are basically insignificant. And most books written about angels were written prior to 1900. So it's old material that uh, people have to look at. So what do you biblically and thoughtfully know about angels? Did you know that there are more Bible passages that deal with angels than that deal with the demonic people, demonic creatures in the Bible? A lot more about angels. Did you know that angels are mentioned in 34 of the 66 books of the Bible? So it seems like there's a wealth of information, doesn't it? There are 17 in both the Old Testament and the New Testament that talk about angels. Did you know that angels are mentioned more times than baptism is? We know that baptism is extremely important. Angelology is an Old Testament study. 
Not a New Testament study. That's a false statement, isn't it? If there's as much in one book as there is in the other, then it's definitely taught by both. But there's more in the New Testament than there is in the Old Testament. If you believe that statement, then you're wrong. Angels are as much, if not more, of a subject in the New Testament than they are in the Old Testament. They are mentioned 108 times in the Old Testament and 186 times in the New Testament. The idea that angels cease working at Golgotha is not consistent with biblical facts. It is not. Angels are women. A lot of denominations teach that all angels are women. Is that true? Or do we know it otherwise? Well, we know for a fact that the only mentioned angels mentioned in the Bible have names of men. What about Gabriel? Notice that Gabriel is mentioned in both the Old Testament and the New Testament in these particular scriptures. Yet while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, uh, being caused to fly swiftly, reached me about the time of the evening offering. Daniel 9, verse 21. That's an Old Testament scripture. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named the Lazarus. Named Nazareth, not Lazarus. In uh, Luke 1, verse 26. Old Testament and New Testament, same way with Michael, is it not? Now at the time, Michael shall stand up. The great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered and everyone who is found written in the book. At that time, Michael, the archangel, is going to stand up, according to Daniel 12, verse 1. Yet yeah, Michael, the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Jude 1, verse 9. Old and New Testament mentions both of these uh, angels. You know, when we see angels appear to men, they appear as men to men. Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting by the gate of Sodom, and when Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face towards the ground. So we know that the angels that left Abraham went down to Sodom and Lot recognized them and bowed to them there. So we have many other scriptures that will tell us that angels as men came before the people. Certain individuals though teach that there is a sexless, sexlessness among angels. Is that true? What does Matthew 22, verse 25 through 30 say? And Jesus answered them and said to them, You are mistaken not knowing the Scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like the angels of God in heaven. Did that say there were no women, that they were all men? No, it didn't say that. If you notice, this text nowhere says anything about gender. We're just talking about an earthly civil thing here called marriage. Marriage. Animals do not marry, but they're not sexless or genderless. Just because the angels do not marry does not make them sexless or genderless. All angels have wings and play harps. Hmm. This is an error 
that occurs because artists have influenced men more than the scriptures have influenced men. There is simply because we don't think about what the Bible says. It cannot be proven from scripture that angels have wings or harps or halos. It's not a fact. Just not a fact. If it is true that cherubim symbols have wings, but otherwise there is nothing to indicate that all angels have wings. Cherubim symbols have wings. If cherubim is a classification of angels, then only that classification would have wings. Not all angels. So all angels don't play harps, have wings, and have halos. It would be a false teaching otherwise. Also in line with this point, the Bible does not teach that there is any such thing as an angelic choir. No angelic choir sang at the birth of Christ, as Caden read to us earlier. Angels have a tongue. That's what it tells us in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1. But I find no record where an angel sang. I found no record where one is singing. And I found no record where one will sing. So how can we deduce that there are angelic choirs singing everywhere? Revelation 5 would be the closest thing that would come to prove that the angels sing. And that doesn't say that they sang, only that they spoke with a loud voice. Even if they did sing, it does not teach such a thing as an angelic choir. So if you worship where they have an angelic choir, you might be worshiping unscripturally. Angels are dead saints in heaven. Is that true? You know, saints can and do die. And they are carried to paradise by the angels. But that does not make them angels. When you die, you're not going to be an angel. Luke 16, verse 22. So it was the beggar died, and he was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Luke 16, verse 22. Luke 16, Lazarus was carried to paradise by the angels, but guess what? He was still Lazarus. He was not an angel. Christ died and went to the same place. He was still Christ. He didn't become an angel. He was resurrected, wasn't he? Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Thessalonians about the return of of Christ and the bodily resurrection. Christ had a bodily resurrection, did he not? Thus we see the Bible teaches resurrection rather than reincarnation. When we die, we don't become angels. They are created beings just as we are. If you say God wanted another angel at the death of an adult or a child, what did you do? You placed the death of that individual at the feet of God and saying, God did it. God didn't do that. He doesn't just come and take you so he can have another angel in heaven. That's wrong. If you say, why did he take my angel? You left no room for comforting anyone who loses a child or a loved one. No room at all because God did it. It's God's fault. How can they be comforted in that knowledge? There's also no plan of salvation for angels who sin. There is for us. We are very, very fortunate that the Lord came and died for us. They are bound in chains and kept in darkness. According to 2 Peter 2 verse 4, For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for punishment. That's where they are. 
angels who sin. They have no plan of redemption. Well, angels can be worshipped. You know, there are a lot of denominations that do worship angels. Some religious organizations openly worship angels as patron saints, even though the Bible plainly condemns this practice. What's it tell you in Revelation 22, verses 8 and 9? Now I, John, this is an apostle, saw the, and heard these things. When I heard and saw, I fell down and worshipped before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. And he said unto me, See that you do not do that. For I am your fellow servant and your brethren the prophets and of those who keep the words of the book of God. Worship God. That's what he wanted us to do. Not worship angels. Angels are not worthy of worship. They are created the same as we are created. Angels are without personal feelings. They don't care whether you live or die, whether you are hurting or not. Is that true? Who says that they are without personal feelings? It's certainly not the Bible. The Bible doesn't say that. What does the Bible say? Well, the Bible teaches that angels have curiosity. 1 Peter 1, verse 12. To them that it was revealed that to them, not to themselves, but to us that they were ministering the things which have now been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which angels desire to look into. They wanted to know about the plan of salvation. They didn't have one. Of course they're curious. And they want to see what they have, what we're taught. It also teaches that angels are in the presence when rejoicing is going on in heaven when the sinner repents. Luke 15, verse 10. Likewise I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Luke 15, verse 10. So we know that they're joyful and curious individuals, created individuals just as we would be. What are some other biblical facts concerning angels? Well, they are created by God. Psalms 148, verse 5. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for He commanded and they were created. Psalms 148, verse 5. Also, if you look in Job 38, verses 4 through 7, reading uh, those verses, it says, Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? It's God asking Job. Tell me, if you have an understanding, who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? To what were the foundations fastened? Who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. That's Job 38 verses 4 through 7. If we notice from this text that the sons of God shouted for joy when God laid the foundations of the earth. When we read the creation story, as recorded in Genesis chapter 1 and 2, we see that Adam was not created until the sixth day. So who was there when the foundation of the earth was laid? Who could have been doing this shouting of joy? Who are these sons of God? They're the angels, aren't they? They're the angels. The angels weren't singing, they were shouting. It was the stars that were singing, and the stars sang together. Not the angels. Let me suggest that little can, there can be little doubt that they were the angels and they had been created prior to the creation of the earth. 
Even though it seems that the angels were in existence before creation of the world, it does not mean that they are eternal. They were not eternal just because they were there when the earth was created. Nehemiah 9 verse 6. You alone are the Lord. You made the heavens and the heaven of heavens. And with all their host, with all their host, the earth and everything on it, the seas and all that is in them, and you preserve them all. The host of heaven worships you. We're talking about angels here, aren't we? With all their host. The host above and the host below. God created the heavens and the earth and all the host. In this passage, we see that God made or created the host of heavens, which would include the angels. Also in line with the fact that angels are created beings, it is inconsistent with the character of God to create anything evil. Habakkuk 1, verse 13. You are of pure eyes than to behold evil. You cannot look on wickedness. Why do you look on those who deal treacherously and hold your tongue when the wicked devours a person more righteous than he? That was a good question Habakkuk had for God. Angels were created good because of having freedom of will as man does, and they also had the ability to choose between doing good and doing bad. Angels have the right of choice, just as we also have the right of choice. This is evidence from the scripture because some chose to do bad. Second Peter 2 verse 4. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. That's where they are, the angels who sinned. Do they come down to earth and become the Satan's angels? No. They didn't. They went directly to darkness and chains, according to the scripture and according to the apostle Peter. Angels are innumerable. Matthew 26, verse 53, and Hebrews 12, 22, and 11, 5, 1, all confirm that the angelic host is innumerable. Or do you think that I cannot now pray to my Father, and He will provide me more than 12 legions of angels? They're innumerable. That's Matthew 26, verse 53. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. Hebrews 12, 22. You can't number them, there's so many of them. Just too many. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Revelation 5 verse 11. They are innumerable. Angels are a distinct creation, being neither God, nor human, nor animals. They are not deity according to Hebrews chapter 1 verses 3 through 4. They are not men according to Psalms 8, verses 4 and 5. It's interesting to note that as we consider these points, that Jesus as deity was above the angels. But as man, at one point, as we discussed in Bible class this morning, he was lower than the angels. Hebrews 2, verses 9 and 10. You know, Satan has angels also. 
Hell is prepared for Satan and his angels. It was the only one reason for it to be prepared. Man was not supposed to sin, but he did. Then he will also say to those on his left hand, Depart from me, you curse it into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Contrary to popular belief, God's angels do not fall only to become Satan's angels. You can't fall from heaven and come to earth and be Satan's angel. That's not the way it works. There is no more possibility than for Satan's angels to repent and become God's angels again. They have no plan of salvation in either direction. The reason so many people tend to believe the idea that uh, angels which sin become Satan's angels is because they're so used to associating angels with the souls of sinful men. We don't become angels. And angels don't become or change sides when they die or sin. It's just not scriptural. Angels simply do not change sides. How Satan created de uh, demons and angels, we don't know for sure. But they are uniquely his. They belong to him. Fallen angels, rather than becoming Satan's angels, are chained and await judgment, as we have read before. 2 Peter 2, 4 and Jude 6. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for judgment in that great day. Jude 1, verse 6. No crossing the line. You're either God's or you're Satan's. You know, they believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And we also have to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Therefore I say to you that you will die in your sins if you do not believe I am He. You will die in your sins. It's that simple. If you have sins, you need to repent of them. You're not going to become Satan's angel, for sure. Acts 17, verse 30. Truly these times of ignorance God overlooked now commands all men everywhere to repent. Not only that, you must confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness. You also must be baptized into Christ for forgiveness of your sins. Or do you not know that as many of you as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we also should walk in a newness of life. Romans 6 verses 3 and 4. Patiently, enduringly, remaining faithful until the end. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 58. Therefore, my brethren, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58. We know that each one of these things are absolutely necessary if we're going to have that eternal life that the angels are desiring to look into. We have that right. They do not. The Lord died for our sins, each and every one of us. I'm going to offer you the invitation now while we stand and sing.